Hi everybody, it's Annette and uh, it's Sunday evening. You guys voted for an 8 p.m. session and I am just on and I'm just going to see whether or not anyone is joining us today. Um, if you are, wave or say hello and then I will be like, okay, there you're there. So I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes and get started. And if you have any questions that you wanted to know, then let me, oh, hi, cool. If you have any questions that you want to specifically ask me, whether it's about hair care or assisted locks or about my business or about my story, who I am, anything, this is a good opportunity to do so. So I'm just going to wait back at the people that are waving at me. Hey. And we're just going to wait, see who else is there. Hey, hello, Lynn. How are you? You had a good week? You can just keep waiting. I realized that after I said that I was gonna do this, that I probably, like maybe I should have done it on my main page. But right now it's just on, like if you're connected to Almacado on it. So I'm wondering if I'm missing people. And I know that next Sunday, I'm definitely gonna be doing it on Fa not Facebook, on Instagram. So just seeing which one is gonna be the best fit for these sessions at the moment. Sorry, just replying to someone asking me a private question here. Okay, so like one of the things that people were asking before is that they wanted to know um, why I make the shampoo that I made, the new shampoo, the stage one shampoo and also why, you know, are the conditioners good for people with locks or not good with people with locks? Um, if you're on and those are the questions that you'd like to see answers to, just think, because I don't really want to be talking to people that don't really want to know the answers to those ones. I can talk about something else if that totally is more up your street. If we were to talk about the stage one, oh, there's something I actually really need, need need to say. So if you've been purchasing recently, you'll notice that there's been a change in the labels. So there's like a mix in what you're receiving. You might still be receiving the old labels, the old labels for the stage one shampoo, but you might be receiving a new label for the peppermint moisture mist. And that is because we are in the process of rebranding and it's a slow and painful process because I am a small company. Um, if I had like a million dollars, it would be quite easy to just do it in one and go, but we do have a lot of the original labels still to run through. The reason why we changed the branding is because we've had that kind of look for the past maybe five years. And hey, Roger, how are you doing? And we wanted to update it we wanted to think we wanted something that would now more accurately represent who we are what we're doing and help us to move forward with it so this is why the branding is changing and we also wanted to clarify some of the stuff on the backs of the labels because as you know we are no longer using bee products so there's no more honey in our products at all and that is one of those things that people i mean honey is a really good moisturizer and it's actually quite good for hair however i mean for years i i mean if you don't know me i was or am quite an environmentalist and for years i have not been feeling very happy about you know colony collapse and problems with the bees and the state of the current environment things like that and i thought it'd be kind of hypocritical for me to continue you know i don't really use animal products in my products but yet i'm using a bee byproduct um the bees don't really make honey for us, do they? they? They don't think that they're making them for us. So I'd rather stick with more plant-based things or plant-based ingredients in the products. And I would like to play my part in helping, just helping, okay? And I know that some of you may think, well, you're still using plastic bottles or whatever. But the bottles that we use are fully recyclable. So we do encourage you to recycle the bottle once you've used it. And we will look again, because when we first started back in 2010, we used to put our products in glass bottles and glass jars. 
and it is possible that we would do that again like just to go back and get back to the roots of things I put hi Angela hi it's possible that we would go back to that again using glass bottles but the issue then with the glass is that we were having a lot of breakage when we were posting them to you and our products go worldwide and it's very frustrating to be a small business owner and have something smashed in transit and the carriers that we were using at the time would tell us that they don't refund liquid products. So any, if from the time it contained a shampoo or a lotion, even the body butters, they were saying, oh no, that's a liquid. So we're not going to refund you for it, even though they smashed it. So that would explain why we stopped using glass, because obviously we were then replacing them at our own cost, because obviously it's not your fault that it smashed in transit. So we stopped using glass. And if I could find a way to use you know, some sort of material that was going to be, you know, not as good as, basically as good as glass, but wouldn't break, then we will move back to that. But for now, we're going to continue to use the bottles and we're just asking that you recycle them as and when you can. Um, for those who've asked whether or not they can bring their product bottles back and then have me like use it again and put new product in it and send it back out to you, we cannot really do that because we can't re-sterilize the bottle like we could but we're a very small operation and we wouldn't be able to guarantee that the bottle was as sterile as it would need to be to put the natural product back into it and not have any residue of some of the bacteria that may or may not be existing in the bottle once you've returned it to us so hi ruby so that is why that's a tricky thing to do we could we can reuse the um non-water-based product jars so if you have like a seal and shine or the buttermelt or the new avocado glaze which is coming up you can totally probably you know if you can come into our lab we can sort that out and refill it for you but like refilling the hair spritzes and stuff it's quite difficult because i don't want to give you something that is not going to be that will make you unwell what's the point yeah so we're not going to do that Branding is where I was. So I was saying that we're changing the way our brands look. And Clever Me hasn't got one of them up, have I? So I'd have to stretch back over there. I would have to find one of the old ones. You can kind of see behind me there with the brown stripe at the... Hi, Marley. The brown stripe at the bottom is the old branding. And we're going to change that. Can I move without dropping this camera? Yes, I can. Uh, it's a good thing I can work out right okay so we're changing it to look more like this where it just is a bit lighter I think um, and nicer than it was before um, you can always give feedback on that and I think because we've only got a couple of people watching now um, so maybe I'm not talking about something that you actually want to hear about but it would be help to guide the sessions if you have questions that you want to ask I know for the next session for sure we will be talking about the stage one shampoo uh, why I made it what it does um, how it is or isn't good for locks um, how it is or isn't good for natural hair we are gonna go over all of that so if you get your questions in ahead of time that'd be awesome tonight was really like a tester to see you know I did the poll did you guys want a live stream you guys said yes what time? You said eight o'clock on Sunday. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm here. And it was just a test to see like how many of you guys are actually going to show up and what sort of things you want to know about what you want to hear about. i um, trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say. Yeah, I think in the sessions, maybe I'll just explain more about how the company is working. For example, when you order what actually happens, how we get through from processing to the actual like okay it's ready to ship it's dispatched and how you can track your order things like that or just maybe I'll do a live session with one of my clients I have some who are brave enough to come on camera with me who may be interested in doing that while we're doing their hair and if again you have any suggestions or anything that you particularly want to see then please don't hesitate hello Judy don't hesitate to let me know I'm trying to think there was one more thing I wanted to say before I went today um, 
probably that I need to figure out whether this is going to be the best platform to do it like over here or whether I should be on my brand page and send out the invitation from there it's a tricky one because Facebook is kind of funny but next Sunday I will be doing it live on Instagram to see what that's like so bear with us while we're trying to figure out what's going to be the best way to connect with you guys and of course you can let me know questions of things that you actually want me to cover and talk about if you want to contact me please email me at annette at almacado.com uh, if you're asking me about sister locks then please email appointments at almacado.com i sometimes have interns working and they are able to answer like do all the admin stuff <laughs> sorry i'm reading Ah, oh, that's a really good sorry i'm reading ruby's message there uh, and she basically saying that she likes the carrot and shea butter balm and hang on the question is how to condition and steam my mature locks okay i can totally answer that question right now because you're here basically for you to i'll talk about steaming them first so you can steam your locks with or without conditioner. So for example, if you were to use, I really need to reach back here. <clears throat> Give me one second. You're gonna see the ceiling for a minute. I'll be right back, hold on. Okay, this is what you get when you come live, right? Okay, so I had to use my hand to do some air, so cool. So we're talking about steaming your locks, okay? So Ruby, you could use something like this. This is the Intense Moisture Mask, or you can use uh, this one. So the Triple Whipped Castor Oil Conditioner. But basically what you wanna do, I, actually you could use the Herbal Hair Mask as well. That'd be really good for steaming treatment. I use that for people who have natural, loose natural hair anyway. What you would wanna do is you wanna apply the product in a, such a way that you don't have like a thick coating. You want it to be a light coating. So you don't wanna see like it caked up and white on your hair. You just wanna rub a bit in your hand or mix a little bit with water because you have locks and you do this. So you're applying it and you focus on the end. So focus on the distal, the, the furthest part from your head because that will be the part that needs the most conditioning. And when you've done that, so you're going through all your locks, and I know that you have a lot of locks, so you're going to go through all of your locks and then pile them up on your head. We are talking about my imaginary hair here. You pile your locks up on your head. You can cover it then with a plastic uh, steam, like plastic wrap or a shower cap, or, or you could leave it as it is, but you probably would need some clips to just hold it up because you want it to be up. Why? Because you're going to sit under the steamer, moving back a bit, sit under the hood, and let the steam come down. The steam will come out of the top of the steamer. So that's why I'm telling you to pile your locks upwards because if they're hanging down, it's only your scalp and your roots that are actually getting any of the steam. You wanna get it all over. You wanna get it to the end, sorry. A good, like, a, at least 10 minutes. Like if we were doing treatments in a trichology clinic, we would do 10 minutes steaming. You could do 15. We don't really leave you under there for half an hour or 45 minutes. So as a rule of thumb for yourself, I'm so sorry this is shaking. I'm trying to stabilize it over there. Um, as a rule of thumb for yourself at home, you could do 10 minutes steaming. You can do that. Um, actually, you can steam your hair even before you wash it. There's some people who do it that way. Steam first, then wash and rinse. That way you don't have to be hopping back and forth between the shower and the bath and wherever you have your actual steamer set up. Or you can do it the way that we would traditionally think of it, which would be to wash your hair and then come out, put all your products in, you know, steam it, then go back in and rinse it out and do it that way. Um, for conditioning, again, so you would, you have mature locks, you have long locks. So for conditioning, again, you would condition maybe, maybe not every time you wash your hair, but you could do it every other time if you're washing once a week. So that'd be twice a month. Or if you're going to do a deep condition, like with the steam at the same time, then you would do that um, twice a month, once a month, as and when you do your deep conditioning session. Steaming, you can steam without the product. Because all you're doing is trying to put additional moisture into your hair. 
hair our hair loves water we know this so that would be a good way of doing it and again you just need 10 minutes and if you're steaming without product that's pretty cool because then you don't have to go back into the shower or over a sink to rinse anything out you can just steam and when you're done because it's going to be damp you can damp you know blot dry your hair or use you could use a hair dryer but it's totally up to you and then maybe a very, very, and notice how many varies I'm talking about here, a very, very, very light application of an oil to just seal that moisture in light. And it shouldn't be castor oil. You don't want one of the thick, heavy oils. You want something that's just gonna be light. If you have no allergies, then sweet almond oil will be okay. You can use coconut oil if you like coconut oil. And one of my favorites would have been the Cocomanoid Joy Blend because it's light. But that does contain nut oils. It contains um, cocomanoi, it contains macadamia nut oil, and coconut. So it's a blended oil just to be really light and lovely on your hair. Um, steaming, if you're bald, just in case anybody's curious, it will be like going to the steam room basically. So it'd be really great for your skin, for your scalp. It will just impart moisture and it will feel nice. Um, but there will be no any there's no additional benefit because you don't have hair to soak up any of the moisture It will just be that your skin will be really happy and moist and again after you did something like that you would want to um, Moisturize What would be what is a nice thing, but you have to be careful is if you were going to steam your scalp Bear with me people if you're gonna steam your scalp because you don't have hair it'd be really nice to exfoliate beforehand so you can use a sugar scrub you can use one of our scrubs you can use a very gentle salt scrub now you just want to make sure that the crystal sizes are small you don't want them to be too large and abrasive and then just gently exfoliate your scalp it's really nice it's kind of like a head massage and then you could steam after that now bear in mind this is just to promote your own well-being. It's also to any detoxify any of the follicles because as you know, if you're bald, sometimes these get plugged with semen or... And why do you want to be in my video, Victor? I might just add you just to see what it is that you want to say. All right, one second. But you know, you can do all of this and it's a way of detoxifying your scalp. You can actually do a scalp scrub if you do have hair, but you have to be very mindful that you are not actually rip in here from the base so you have to be you know careful as to the size of the particles in the scrub that you're using so you want them to be fine like sand or even smaller or you could use like if you went to the chemical size you could be using like a chemical sort of scrub that contains something like salicyclic acid but that is a whole other kettle of fish i don't think we need to go down there this evening and this is really rocking about so let's see if i can get it to stop moving um so i hope that that helped Ruby with that. Um, oh, Victor. Okay, I see your um, question now, Victor. Sorry, I had to scroll down a bit there. Um, just making sure that I didn't miss somebody else. And one second. Okay, so products for locks. So I'm specifically going to be talking about... This is still shaking. I'm so sorry, guys. I would specifically be talking about products that I have. So I have a shampoo <clears throat> this one which is the stage one seaweed shampoo victor and it is really good at cleaning between the spaces in locks because obviously the the hair has been either wound around each other or if it's interlocked it's kind of interwoven and so it's a mass of hair and it's not as simple or as easy to just clean the hair as it is if you're dealing with loose natural hair so you want to have a product that basically kind of gets in between all the layers of your hair and is able to kind of pull the dirt out. And this is why when I, well, on the original label, label Lynn, can I talk? Um, it would have said you can leave the shampoo on for a little while before you rinse it. And that is just to give it a, sorry, still shaking, just to give it an extra helping hand in terms of boosting or allowing it time to actually, you know like when you're washing dishes, this is the best analogy I can get. So when you're washing dishes and you have something that perhaps has, hi, hi, hi Althea Lorna. Um, if you're washing dishes and you have something that has caked on grease or it's quite dirty, sometimes you don't just straight away wash it. You might soak it for a little while in some soapy water and then wash it. And basically that is what my shampoo will be doing if you put it on and leave it on for a little while 
and I really mean a little while. I don't mean 10 hours. I mean like two minutes, five minutes. Do something, well, bathe, read a book, I don't know. Um, and then rinse it off. That just gives it an extra boost. Um, products for locks. So yeah, in terms of keeping your locks hydrated or moisturized, I have these sprays which are like this. This one is cherry. I, not many men buy the cherry. And that just basically gives you a shot of moisture. It's like a hair tea in a bottle. So it's got herbs in it and it's got a small dose of protein because as you know, our hair is primarily comprised of protein. So it has an affinity to the hair strand and it helps to absorb to the hair and strengthen it. And also it helps to keep some of that moisture in. And it has aloe vera, which is an awesome moisturizer for black hair, for curly hair. And preservatives obviously to make sure that there are no nasties in your product there's no mold and so on and so on so that was one way and then again my my second recommendation is usually that you use a light oil if you need it not everybody's going to need it so just a light oil to seal in your moisture i don't recommend that you use things like shea butter or waxy type products on the shaft of your locks. I know that some people need to retwist with waxy products, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you put them on the body of your lock because that will contribute towards, hi Camille, that will contribute towards buildup and just give you extra products problems <laughs> later on. There was another thing I was gonna think of. All right, if you have small locks, interlocks, sister locks, and you do, and they are mature, you can also use the silk spritz to uh, moisturize your hair and you can use the apricot argan and metafoam moisture milk it's a hydrating milk and it's very light and it's easily absorbed that moisture over milk can also be used on thick or traditional locks because it's so easily absorbed the key to applying that and there was a video that i put out um a while back showing how you use it is you put the product into your hand just a few dollars but you have to scrunch it into your hair. Do not try to pour the product into your hair. You need to put it in your hands first and then gently massage it into sections of your locks. And I will reshare that, vo that video after this one in case anybody is interested. Okay, will you be able to get this? Yes, Victor, uh, my website is www.almacado.com. We ship worldwide, but we do ship to the UK. Um, you can also WhatsApp me, cuz, and we can, I can send you the link if you didn't get it there, but it's very straightforward. Shipping is usually one to three days. It's about one day if you use Royal Mail Priority Express, and they normally take two to three days if it goes by second class. Um, totally up to you. Um, thank you, Camille. That's Camille saying that she loves stage one shampoo. Awesome. Um, Lorna, do you have any questions or does anybody else watching have anything that they want to ask? I'm just trying to scroll down as quickly as possible to find everyone. Um, okay, because if there are no other questions, I'm not going to keep just sitting here chatting rubbish. No, it's not rubbish. I'm just nervous. I don't really like being on camera. So I'm just sitting here thinking like I'm in a room kind of talking to myself. It's kind of weird. So uh, I know you guys are there. It's nice. Um, thank you, Lorna. I see that you said you like that. Oh, hi, Judy. Okay, hold on. Judy, I'm just reading that. I had to press to see the whole of it. Hold on. And no, Lorna, I haven't covered itchy scalp, so I'll go and do that in a second. So, okay, Judy, your question is about having sister locks installed about a month ago, and your hair looks quite frizzy. So that's good. That means that, you know, it's starting to do what it's supposed to do. Um, have I got any suggestions? So yes, what you can do, and since your babies are new, it's not going to be a product that I'm going to say. What I'm just going to say is I recommend is that you either wrap your hair the same way you would have done when you had relaxed hair, assuming that you had relaxed hair. You wrap it at night because that keeps the frizz down. Secondly would be to braid your hair. So at night or at least once a week or something like that, you just give yourself um, some cornrows or flat twists or big braids and you sleep with it like that. Um, you can dampen the hair lightly, and I really mean lightly, it shouldn't be dripping wet. You can dampen it lightly before you braid it and then sleep with it. In the morning when you wake up, it will be tamed 
it will be tamed and it will also be slightly curly. So if you want it to be straight, then wrap it. Just keep it smoothed around and wrap it. If you want it to be, if you don't mind the crinkle or the curl, then have a braid out, then do that. But that will help the shaft of the hair to be smoother or to look more smooth when you are out and about. So that would deal with your frizzy hair. And you can let me know in the comments if that answered your question or if there was something else that you were trying to get, if I misunderstood what you were asking. For itchy scalp and dry scalp, okay, so I'm gonna um, do those two separately because uh, I think they warrant being dealt with separately. Itchy scalp, um, if you're talking about itchy scalp as a new person, I really wish this would stop shaking. Let's try moving it here. Does that help? Maybe, maybe it will, maybe it won't. We'll try it here. Itchy scalp, you can handle that by, well, it depends on what the cause of your itching is because obviously if you have an infection or there's inflammation of the scalp, that's a different reason and a whole, as again, that's a different ballpark and it's itching for a different reason. But if it is just general itching of the scalp, there are a few things that you can do. If you are a newly locked person and it's itching because it's just in that itchy stage, you can always spritz your hair, like your scalp directly with water. Or much nicer would be to spritz it with my peppermint. You're welcome, Judy. Yeah. Or you can use my peppermint tea tree spritz to spritz lightly to the scalp. The peppermint is a very light analgesic. So I don't know how much aromatherapy you guys are familiar with, but sometimes if you have a headache, uh, you can put peppermint just here and here and it can bring you some natural relief so because it is it has a mild analgesic property so using it in the spray would then direct that directly to the areas now bear in mind some people have a sensitivity to peppermint the spray contains yeah peppermint and tea tree so antibacterial and analgesic it's an anti-inflammatory that's the properties of the oils the essential oils within the the blend you can Spray that directly to your scalp, as I said, and it will give you some relief. Um, if your scalp is still itchy, one of the other causes for itchy scalps can be that it just needs washing. So you could increase the frequency with which you shampoo your hair. Maybe you're doing it, let's say, once every two weeks. Maybe you need to do it once a week. Maybe you're doing it once a week and your hair is basically telling you, I would like to be washed every three days. So just listen to your body, have a think about what's happening there and move accordingly. Also increasing the amount of water and fatty acids that you drink or consume would be helpful. So if you increase your omega-3s, your oily fish, that kind of stuff, um, flaxseed oil, and um, there's another one that I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but when I remember it, I will mention it. Vitamin D, that's it. So anything that's got vitamin D in it, or if you're taking vitamin D supplements, that would also be helpful and will help with the condition. Um, let me just think if there was one more thing I was gonna say on that before I went on to, no. Dry scalp, um, similar. Now, the, so for example, like the vitamin D, the things that you eat, so eating more oily fish, you know, if you're gonna take a spoonful of cod liver oil, anything like that, if you wanna do that, you can. That, you know, it's not gonna do any harm. You wanna just make sure that you are increasing the moisture in your body. One of the things that people sometimes fail to make the connection with is that if you have dry skin, it's likely that you will have dry scalp. So the same way that you have to give your skin additional moisture or whatever it is that you do to keep your skin under control, you will need to be doing something similar for your hair. The, the, the nut comes because like with sister locks, you're not meant to be using oily based products or oily products because they attract um, lint, fluff, debris to your hair. So that's where it can get a little bit tricky. However, if you have mature locks and you've passed that stage and your, your hair is doing absolutely fine, then you can go on to moisturize your scalp. Um, as a trichologist, we don't really recommend oiling the scalp because we think that it can lead to increased sensitivity or it can lead to scalp issues and all of these other things. But you know, I'm sure there's going to be a thousand people that will comment and be like, well, I've been oiling my scalp since day dot and there's no problems. So whatever works for you. Okay. If you're doing it and it's not giving you a problem, 
I'm not here to say anything else, okay? What I would suggest for dry scalp is, okay, something similar. So you want to keep the scalp moisturized or hydrated. Give it some water. You can, again, use one of the spritzes, like the cherry spritz or the peppermint. If you don't, if you can't use the peppermint, there's coconut. There's also sandalwood directly to the scalp. Give it a little, hi, Lawrence, hi. Give it a little love, just a few sprays, and then you can just, do this to kind of massage it or move it around so that all of your scalp is being covered. You can also use a very, now if you are at the point where your locks are mature or you feel that you're gonna take the risk with oil, I would start first with a light oil, for example, fractionated coconut oil, the Coco Manoy Joy oil blend that, um, by Almacado. Um, or if you're going for a plain oil, and again, I'm going to stick light, it would be something like sweet almond oil or grapeseed oil. And what you would do is basically your fingertips, light coating. So you, if you had a bowl, I'm going to pretend the bowl's on my shoulder, you would just tap your fingers in it like this, just so you have enough. I don't want to see it dripping off your fingers, nothing like that. And then basically what you would do is you just press and just kind of move it to where it's dry and that is going to be enough to do your scalp. So if you look at me, I do not have dry scalp, even though I have no hair because I just keep it all moisturized. And those tips can work for you guys too. The problem will be if you put too much oil or too, I wouldn't even, I'm not even talking about grease guys, if you put too much oil, no. If you were using Salve My Scalp, which is an excellent product for dry scalp and itchy scalp, what again you would do is, oh man, I should have got that. You would just, I'm gonna use my cheek, I'm sorry. You would just rub, that's me rubbing the jar. That's how much product is coming up, a little bit, not lots. And again, you coat in your fingertips and you just take it across your scalp or the area where the dryness is and you're doing that. But like, generally speaking, for dry scalp, you wanna just make sure you're not washing too frequently because it may be that, you know, you're just robbing your scalp of its natural oils and that's why you're struggling. So make sure that it's in moderation. If you find that washing, you're currently washing every three days and you're suffering with dry scalp and it's tight and itchy, but then it means it's been stripped. So you don't want to do that. Try changing first, you know, just process of elimination. Try first changing how frequent you're washing it. So drop it down to once a week, drop it to a week and a half, drop it to two weeks and see if it made any difference. If it didn't make any difference and you're trying the oils or you're trying Salve My Scalp Hair Balm and you find that it's still not making any difference, then what I would be saying to you is that you probably do not have dry scalp. You probably have a condition like um, psoriasis or you have scalp eczema or you have dandruff because there is a difference between the two. A lot of the times we're just saying, oh yeah, yeah I got dry scalp, I got dry scalp, but it's actually not. It's actually a condition and that needs to be treated in a different way. So have a, a lot of it is like working with your own body. What is your body saying to you? How does it feel? And listening to the cues that it's giving you. If you find that you drank, your hair itches after you drank alcohol the night before, then, you know, there's a, a link there and it's possible that, okay, let me try that again and see if it happens again. And if it does, then you know there's some sort of link where your body gets itchy after you've had alcohol and it might be the way that the body is releasing the alcohol back out, the process of elimination, or it could be that you ate some sort of food it doesn't like. There's many different ways, but you need to listen and see how it is, because by changing the frequency of shampoo, it might be fine. That reminded me of another point where some people, like you use your shampoo, and again, you might find that your scalp is a bit dry. You can actually dilute your shampoo. So if you had this, I'm gonna see if I can measure it out on here, where this pink line is, so imagine that you were gonna, you, you would never use this much shampoo, okay? Let me just say that from the gym. You are not going to use this much shampoo. But if you were using this much shampoo in a bottle, wear this up from the bottom to this yellow, pink line, then you could dilute that shampoo up to the top of this seaweed. Mix that, like give it a good shake, mix it together, and then wash your hair with that. So using, you know, a diluted shampoo solution is another way to help with that. That's a, <laughs> thanks Petra. That's another way of, of doing that. Also, 
um, diluted shampoo. So you can use a spray bottle. Why do I not have these things? You see, we didn't know we was going to be talking about this stuff, man. If you guys had sent these things in beforehand, I would be like, and here's this. And let me show you how to do this. So maybe I'm going to have to do that in another video. But basically, you can fill a spray bottle, a little small one, and spray the shampoo directly to where it needs to go. And furthermore, if you are not putting loads and loads and loads of product in your hair, you don't need to be putting loads of shampoo in your hair. That is one of the things that I really, really, I say, it does my nut in to see how much shampoo people use on their hair because it's not actually necessary to use that much unless your hair is caked in like petroleum jelly. Like I'm trying to think why you would need it. Like some of the videos that I watch, I'm like, y'all just waste any product and then you're wasting your money. So like my shampoos are concentrated. I make them so that you can dilute them if you have to, but you should be using a small amount. You really, when people say a dime size amount, they really do mean like a dime size amount. For me, you would just be using two or three grams of shampoo. You don't need to use a lot. And you're applying it to the parts that you know are dirtiest. So if you know that you have flaky scalp right here at the bottom, then you want to apply it there the most. If you know that you've applied loads of product to the ends of your hair, then you apply it to that the most, okay? Don't be like stripping off your scalp when you're trying to strip your ends. And another thing to point out is that a shampoo, if it doesn't suds on your first application, it's likely that... Because my shampoos are natural based or based on natural ingredients, they're not full of high foaming agents. So if you apply a shampoo or any natural shampoo and you find that it doesn't suds up very much on the first application, that means that your hair was full of an oil. Whether that was a natural oil, like your own sebum that's, you know, gone in there or I'll come back to that, Lorna. Yeah. Whether it's a, la a natural oil or an oil that you've applied or a product that you've applied, if it's not suds in as much as you think that or as, or as much as you would like, it means that there is something still uh, on your hair and basically the product has now, the shampoo has now adhered to that and is trying to lift it. So again, obviously you would do a second wash and then you could do, you know, a, a third application, but nobody really needs to do a third application. And in order, and you'll see that it would foam up the next time. So Althea has basically said that like, I feel like it's not washed properly if I use a small amount. And I think we've been conditioned to think that, you know, we have to use more. We looked at that herbal essence lady and we were like, look at her. Yes, yes, she got bare foam coming out the head, looking like she's in you know, like a foam party, having bubbles for days. We don't have to do that. You really don't need all of that. Like, you really don't. Less is more. The way that things have progressed in terms of natural hair care, and the products and ingredients that are available as, available to us as formulators, things can be stronger without necessarily needing to have all of those suds. That foaming action kinda came around or gained popularity in the 1970s. So before that, when people were using like carbolic soap, it wasn't very sudsy, but it did clean. So we're being programmed since then to think that, oh, in order to feel clean, we have to have these bubbles all over us. We need a bubble bath and we need shower gels that really foam up and stuff. And if they're not foaming, then it's not working right. But that's not necessarily true. And it takes a little bit of reconditioning to understand that, okay, it actually is still working without that. And that leads back to one of those, you know, like to the point about dry scalp where you may think that you have dry scalp or you may be causing your own dry scalp because of the amount of shampoo that you're actually using during your wash time. So those are, that's something to consider, like maybe take it down a notch or so and see how you get on with that with dilute shampoo and see how you get on with that because it will still work. It just means it's a bit more diluted. I'm just gonna do a little scrolling to see if there were any other questions that I've missed. And then I think we should wrap up okay does anyone have any other questions sorry i'm just still trying to just check that there's nothing else here and any suggestions for what you would like the next live session to be about would be super awesome apple cider i found it apple cider vinegar okay for hair washing okay so apple cider vinegar is an acidic substance 
So if you all know all about the pH scale and everything, you know about acidity. Acid <laughs> I cannot say this. Why? What is wrong with me? Acidity. There you go. Right. Um, versus alkaline substances. So your hair and scalp and your skin basically are naturally acidic. Our, the pH of that is around, let's say, 4.55 for the pH of hair and your skin. For washing, so like soap, if you were using traditional soap or even like a soap shampoo. Soap, notice I'm saying soap. I'm not saying a synthetic detergent shampoo bar, the soap shampoo bars. Their pH is normally above seven. So seven would be neutral. So they're gonna probably be around nine. If you go up to 11, it's very alkaline. The, the benefit of having something which is alkaline is that if you have a lot of buildup or a lot of buildup, that's really mainly the thing that I wanna talk about, then something very alkaline will raise the cuticles of your hair. And the cuticles are the outside layer, the coating. So they're like scales on the hair shaft. You will raise them and it will help pull out and remove anything which is not supposed to be there. So any grime and any crap, something very alkali will do that. If you use something which is alkali, those scales will stay up. What you want to do is close the scales. Otherwise, your hair will be susceptible to further damage and anything can go in it because you've raised the scales, so it's open. So something like apple cider vinegar then will close the scales again will also stink, sorry, but it's not the nicest thing to smell in your hair, but it will close your scales again. You can also use beer. That will also close the scales again. So it is good as a conditioner, not as a shampoo or something to clean your hair with. It will condition the hair in terms of returning it back to the state before. So if you've used something very alkali to raise the pH of the hair and raise the scales, then you use something acidic to lower the pH back to where it should be and close the scales again. The benefit, like, so that's for apple cider vinegar, but you can also use these. I did my research. So the hair spritzes are acidic. They help to close your cuticles and therefore trap in moisture. It's worth noting that if your cuticles stay open, you cannot retain moisture in your hair, you will start complaining of dry hair, brittle hair, or thinking that your hair is very porous. And that's simply because the scales are open, so any moisture you're putting in is just, it's not being retained, it's evaporating. So you wanna just close that first, make sure your pH of your hair is back in balance, and then you can seal that down if you wanted to, and that's not if you have, you know, young locks. You would then seal it in with an oil, or a light butter, or even a leave-in conditioner just to hold that. And that is what I was going to say earlier when I was talking about um, moisturizing your locks. So you could use a leave-in conditioner as well. That was for Ruby. Um, just a light one on your ends to help retain moisture and seal that moisture in there. Have I answered your question, Lawrence? Okay. All right, cool. So are there any questions on that or there's, oop, hi Roger, okay. Yep, I can totally do that. That makes absolute sense, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, anyone else? I know you're not just sitting there looking at my head, right? Like, what else? Okay, you're welcome, Lawrence. Like, join me again. Bring more questions and I will be prepared. Um, I have some mannequin heads that I can also use to demonstrate things on. And hopefully it would help get the point across because I am aware that I am quite hairless and I can't demonstrate on my own head for you. Um, anything else, guys? I'm reading, I'm checking. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up this evening here and I've written down the questions that you're looking at for me to address next Sunday. But thank you for bearing with me with my shaky camera and my nervous self. Oh, 
just, oh great, question there from Lawrence. Would I recommend a leave-in conditioner every day? You shouldn't technically need to use a leave-in conditioner every day. Um, simply because what you, your aim is to that when you do your hair, that you have added enough moisture and emolliency to the hair for it to be styled and then you've protected that and it will last you for a couple of days. So for example, if on day one, after you've washed and conditioned, excuse me, excuse me, I'm gonna hiccup, sorry. After you've washed and conditioned and then you've done your leave-in conditioner and then you've applied, you know, twist and twirl, butter or whatever, a leave-in conditioner, you know, something to seal it in and then an oil or however your current regime is, then you twist your hair and you put it up or you put it in a bun and you leave it and you, know, you lay your edges down. You shouldn't be doing that every single day because you don't want to be over styling or over manipulating your hair anyway because that's not going to help you to retain your hair or to grow your hair long because you're constantly messing with it. The ideal is that you want to moisturize it and put it away. Uh, what you would be aiming for is basically, you know, clean it, condition it, moisturize it, protect it. Um, about 20 questions have come in, so I'm going to be like trying to answer all of them before I go, okay? Um, well, some of them. And uh, that's, so you wouldn't need the leave-in conditioner every single day. You may want a hair moisturizer, like just to be like, maybe three days in you found that your twists were looking a bit dry. Then you could spritz them with the silk spritz, um, which is available on our website. So more like a, a spray. Or you could use the one of the hydrating spritzes the aloe vera spritz and then just the light and i keep saying light but it really is a light application of oil on top of that just to trap that in or to keep that moisture back in the hair Part, especially because we have central heating on at the moment still and it can be quite drying on your hair so you want to just keep topping that up the more leave-in conditioner you put on your hair the more and i mean more frequently so not like in one go i mean like repeatedly the more likely you are to have build up by the end of the week and then your hair is all stiff or it's starting to look gray, which you don't want. So keep that to a minimum. More about building oils, um, which oils are like. So Leandre, it's like earlier we were talking about some oils, but I can go over that. Let me think quickly, because there are oils that you can use on your scalp and there's oils you can use on your hair. So because I've done the scalp already, that's at the beginning of the video, I would just say that what oils I recommend for your hair would be like avocado oil. It's very good for dry hair and it's quite full of B vitamins and A vitamin. So those are very, 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 very good because some of the B vitamins have an affinity with amino acids, which also are found in proteins, which is what our hair is made of. So that's quite good. I wouldn't use an, an oil as a pure moisturizer. The oil is there to add emolliency and to stop hair strands from catching against each other. For moisturizing, I would use a water-based product. So the oils that I recommend are always avocado and sweet almond, and you can use argan and baobab is quite lovely as well if you can get your hands on it. Uh, we do have oil blends on the website, so you could also just choose one of those. The oil blends that, we, that I've made are basically synergistic. So they are oils that you think work together, which will have a lovely profile of fatty acids, versus long chain fatty acids versus short chain fatty acids and whether or not they're going to be penetrating the hair strand or whether they're just going to sit on top and help prevent uh, water loss. Okay, um, sorry, there were a lot here and some of them I felt I could answer quite quickly. So I'm just looking for them. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Victor, can you clarify what you meant when you said what alkali to use, please? Um, are you referring to shampoo, like when, when you're cleaning your hair? Or uh, I'm not too sure what you meant by that. So if you just clarify, um, I will answer that question. Um, the best way to wash sister locks. That's a nice one. That's easy. Hang on. I'm present. Right. So these two kind of make, kind of go together between Althea's question and Norwita's question. So the best way to wash sister locks is bundled when they're new you want them braided and bundled and when they're longer or more mature 
the thing is that because you don't put loads of product into your locks, then you don't really have to focus so much on your ends because they are not full of stuff that needs to be removed. The main thing that you would be concerned about is getting your scalp clean because your scalp is like your skin. And so every three days it's gonna turn over and you know we're constantly renewing, there's dead cells being pushed to the surface. And what you wanna be doing is catching those dead cells and removing them. So when you're washing your hair, you're concentrating on getting the scalp clean if your hair is loose, then you're concentrating more on, well, not more, but you're equally concentrating on your ends because you've been applying products when you've been moisturizing it, when you've been styling, you've, you've used gel, if you've been using, you know, heavy butters and things like that, then you want to always start with a clean slate. So you want to wash and make sure that's all gone and then start again with your routine. Um, I think I may bring this up again, um, Althea, to look at that in a future video where I can have a, a real life person here with me or like if Izzy's home or I can use the mannequin so I can demonstrate. I think that one, cause me just telling you may not be quite answering it. So I'm gonna pin that as well. But hopefully I gave you some, some, something to work with there. How do I recommend to protect locks while you're sleeping? I would say to cover them. I would say to cover them with satin or silk or have a silk pillow case if you want. Um, the reason why I'm saying to cover them just the same way that you know loose naturals cover their hair is to avoid lint and cotton and bits of things getting into the hair, into your locks while you're sleeping. Um, that's, that can be quite annoying. And I can always tell like when my clients don't cover their hair at night or if they have issues with it because I can see and it's where it turns up. So if you wanna just protect your locks, cover them. Be mindful, however, of covering your hair with like, this is this is no shade, okay? With like a do-rag type thing, which you have to tie and there's a band across your forehead or whatever, and it's tied behind here. Please be mindful because if your hairline is here and you're tying it right on your hairline, you can cause breakage. And over time, you know, when you're finding where, where's my edges gone, it's because this is where the thing is sitting. So be careful of where it goes, maybe pull it forward a little bit, even though that looks like you have no forehead, but you know, pull it forward a little bit and or make sure that you're not tying it too tight. I know you're gonna say then it's gonna come off at night. Hmm. One of the ways to get around that is to use a lock stock and a lock sock looks like a, it looks like a stocking, like, or a skirt, yeah, you know what? It looks like a skirt. And it has a kind of a band at the front and it's open at the back, but it's like a skirt and you put it on and it's like a skirt for your locks or a skirt for your head and your locks are inside, but they're covered. So that's something to look at if you wanted to protect your locks while you're sleeping. And you're very welcome, Lawrence. Thanks. Dry skin, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna do skincare on a different video but you can join me, Norita. That's a brilliant question. I'm gonna pin that one. We will do that one on another one. Um, Victor. Okay. Sometimes when people say that they've got buildup in their hair or in their locks, I need to clarify whether it's buildup or whether it's lint, because those are two different things. Buildup will be caused by things like very oily products or shea butter or waxy products being put into the hair and it can't quite get rinsed out because it's now in between the interlocked bits of your hair or the interwoven bits of your lock. So that would be build up or using products which basically are adhering to the hair shaft and they're not being properly removed when you wash. If you're talking about lint, lint is notoriously difficult to get back out again because our hair and it pains me to say this, but you know, Afro textured hair can feel a bit like cotton, can feel that have that kind of cis, uh, consistency. And if you think of another piece of cotton or lint or fabric, just getting in there, basically what it's doing is catching on to the scales of your cuticle, you know, the cuticle scales and locking on basically. So it's acting like hair and locking into your lock with the rest of your hair. So it's more difficult to get that out um, using a product because basically whatever you need is going to have to try to dissolve the fabric and think about that if you're dissolving the fabric 
then chances are you run the risk of dissolving bits of your hair at the same time, which we don't want to do. So realistically, something alkali will help with buildup. A really good alkali mix would be something with baking soda. Baking soda is very alkali. So if you made a baking soda solution, you could use that, try using that on the bits where there is buildup. Bearing in mind, you don't want to leave it on too long. And also that baking soda crystals have very large, they're large. And so you don't want to do anything where it's scratching against the scalp or anything like that because you don't want to be ripping hair. Make sure it's fully dissolved. You don't want any crystals catching on your scalp or damaging your follicles that way. But you would use an alkali solution like that. Try soaking the lot, and it may take more than one session because obviously baking soda is natural, a natural substance, and it's not designed for how I'm telling you to do it. Um, and always remember that after you've done that, bring it back down, bring the pH of your hair back down, either by using the apple cider vinegar or you know one of my products or something, even aloe vera, just to bring that pH back down after you've tried using that. But I will warn you, it will be a slow process, and you may have to repeat it more than once before you get the desired effect that you want to get. Okay, I'm just checking. Oh, and most shampoos are alkali um, because that's how they clean. So they tend to be... Hmm. I was going to say up to like eight, but you don't really find very, very, very alkali because that will burn your eyes. You can use like a soap bar, shampoo soap. So if you could get one of those, excuse me, that would be very alkali as well. And the baking soda would be the one. So most shampoos tend to be on the alkali slide anyway. Um, it would just be a matter of you leaving it on for a little while and soaking. But I think if you have build up on traditional locks which are mature or there's it's a significant amount of build up not your everyday build up then you probably want to use the baking soda solution can we watch this video again i really hope so i'm going to try to save it hopefully i don't do this wrong but yes you should be able to watch this again and i'm just checking all right so skincare will be the next one and are there any more questions before we say good night well, you all have me on here a whole hour. Who knew I actually got into this? It was pretty cool chatting with you. Is there anything else that you wanted to ask this evening? Just water. So you're mixing the baking soda with water, nothing else. Do not add anything else. Don't mix it with apple cider vinegar because you're defeating the purpose. You're mixing an alkali with an acidic substance, so you're moving it back towards neutral, pointless. You want to just mix it with water and the baking soda. Don't mix it with anything else. You're all welcome, Victor. Okay. Are there any other questions for this evening, guys? No? Okay. So, thank you for joining me. Any other questions that you post on this post, um, afterwards I will carry forward to the next, um, the next video. And I have enjoyed talking to you. I was nervous at the beginning, but thank you it was um, interesting please any new questions anything else you want to know do ask me and i will carry them forward to the next session and yes lawrence i will see you guys next sunday at 8 p.m and i will figure out how to save this so you guys can have it okay cool thank you so much for joining me this evening and have a beautiful week talk to you soon